Good morning, y'all. Welcome back to my channel. Back to my channel. I have a word this morning from the Lord. Excuse my hair. I just did it, and it's just... It's okay. That doesn't even matter. Uh, so, we are going to read from the book of Job. Before we start, I want to do a prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for this beautiful morning that you woke us up, Lord. Thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your loving kindness, Lord. I pray for those that are listening right now that are behind this phone, Father God, that you meet them where they are, that you open their ears to hear and a heart to receive. What do you have to say this morning? In Jesus' name, amen. So... We are going to read from the book of Job. If you guys already know the story of Job, then you know that Job lost a lot. He lost his family. He lost his wife. He lost his children. He lost his crops. He lost everything. But he never, ever lost his faith. He never, ever cursed God. A lot of times we... we go through our trials and tribulations and we're like why God and some people scream and yell at God you know we all had those moments you know and um but we have to keep our faith you know we have to know that God has a purpose and a plan for every situation that goes on in our lives um there's a reason for your circumstance. There's a reason for your situation. As hard as it can be. Um, for instance, for me, my daughter has autism. And there was many, many times that I have questioned God. There was many times where I wondered why. Like, why God? Like, why me? Until that question hit me when I said to myself, why not me? He chose me to use me for his glory. He chose my daughter to use her for his glory. And I never thought of it that way until um, I was watching The Chosen. And one of the guys in The Chosen, I forgot his name, in the Bible... Uh, he had a disability, and I think he had, like, he, he limped. Um, and so, he asked Jesus, why don't you heal me? And this is in The Chosen. And Jesus told him, a lot of people have that story where I healed them. Many have that same story. But your story is different. Your story is special. Your story is about enduring to the end. Believing God. Trusting in the Lord. And your faith in Jesus despite of your condition. See, God doesn't always heal people, everybody. He chooses who he heals. But just because you're in your situation and you see other people, miracles happening, but church didn't come yet, does not mean that one, God is not going to do it, or two, if he doesn't, it's okay. Because he's using your situation, your life, for his glory. So others can see who he is and how you endured to the end. Because our hope, is in what is going to come, which is us going to heaven, to our home with Christ. We're going to be healed up there. We're going to be whole up there. And looking forward to that. Because here our body, how do I say, it's just temporary. Our situation is temporary. But heaven is forever, eternity. That's what matters. So no matter where you see yourself, in your situation, know that eternity awaits you. 
And one day you will be healed, but it may not be here right now. And a lot of people do not uh, do not show that side of the Christian walk. They just say, oh yeah, God can heal me. But they don't say the other side where sometimes God doesn't heal. Sometimes God allows it to stay, allows you to stay in your situation. It reminds me of all the disciples in the Bible, uh, especially Paul, Paul, the Apostle Paul. He was in jail. He was for his faith. He could have crumbled in his situation. He could have cursed God, but he didn't. What he did was he worshipped God through his situation, through his circumstance, because he knew Hallelujah. He knew where he was going. He knew the end. He knew that I am going to eternity with my Father in heaven. So I may be in my position now. But glory to God, I will be in glory with Him. So don't allow your situation to bring you depression, to bring you anxiety, to bring you to a place of darkness, to bring you away from your faith. Hold on to Jesus. Moses didn't get to see the promised land here on earth. But he got to experience the promised land in heaven. A lot of us may not cross the Jordan River here. But we will cross that river to heaven. Hallelujah. God has a ministry and a purpose for your life. And there's a mission for you here on earth. No matter what condition you're in. No matter if you're going to be healed or not. Just know that God has a purpose for your life. And you have a story. So don't look at your circumstances and say, Oh, it's over. This is done. I'm, I'm, this is going to be the end of me. Or, or, you know, find yourself in depression. Don't stay there. Job... Didn't allow his wife. His wife even said, turn around and curse God. He did not. He was faithful. He stood firm in his faith. And God rewarded him with more than he lost. And so I wanted to read some of Job's, um, some of Job's uh, passage. Um, I'm trying to see where he, okay, so I'm going to read some of this, not all of it because it's a lot, but it says, Job 27, as surely as God lives, who has denied me justice, the almighty who has made my life bitter, as long as I have life within me, the breath of God in my nostrils, my lips will not say anything wicked, and my tongue will not utter lies. I will never admit you are in the right till I die. I will not deny my integrity. I will maintain my innocence and never let go of it. My conscience will not reproach me as, a long, as long as I live. May my enemy be like the wicked, my advice adversary like the unjust. For what Hope have the godless when they are cut off, when God takes away their life. Does God listen to their cries? When distress comes upon them, will they find delight in the Almighty? Will they call upon God all the time? I will teach you about the power of God. Amen. The ways of the Almighty I will not conceal. You will all see, you have all seen this yourself. Why then this meaningless talk? Here is the fate God allotes to the wicked, the heritage a ruthless man receives 
from the Almighty. However, many his children, their fate is the sword. His offsprings will never have enough to eat. The plague will bury them who survive him, and their widows will not weep for them. Though he heaps up silver like dust and clothes like piles of clay, what they lay up the righteous will wear. The house he builds is like a moth cocoon, like a hut made by a watchman. He lies down wealthy but will do so no more. When he opens his eyes, all is gone. Terror overtakes him like a flood. A tempest snakes him away in the night. The east wind carries him off and he is gone. It sweeps him off of his place. It hurls itself against him without per mercy, and he flees headlong from its power. It claps his hand in de deri derision and hisses him out of his place. So without God, we have nothing. And Job knew that. He said, listen, all that I have is the Lord's anyways. And if he decides to take it away from me, I am not going to lose my faith because he has a plan and a purpose. Job was almost in his deathbed. But Job never cursed God. He knew where his hope was. He knew where his faith was. He knew that all this is just temporary, that he would be with God. And even if he perished, he would be with the Lord. You know, so we have to have that faith. We have to understand that our situation, God has a plan. And we need to trust him. And I know it's hard. And I know you've been going through this for many years. And I know it seems like there's no light at the end of the tunnel. There seems like no rainbow after the rain. But God is telling you, keep continue to endure. And I will show you. I will take you out of this. I will, sh I will show you the way. God is going to make a way where there is no way. When the Israelites were walking through the wilderness for 40 years, they could have made it to the promised land earlier, but because they were complaining, because they were complaining, it prolonged their blessing. And God still had mercy and love towards them. And when they finally reached the promised land, they understood who God is. So a lot of times we, we complain, we cry about our situation. Sorry, my glasses. We, uh, we look at our situation, we think negative, we start to fall apart. But God is saying, give it to me. Understand that I have a plan and a purpose for your situation, for your life. I will never leave you nor forsake you. I have plans for you, says in Jeremiah 29, 11. I have plans for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans for a future and hope. That is what God has for you. That is what his word says. All we have to do is trust the Lord. And sometimes that could be very hard. Just like the Israelites, even though God gave them food from manna from heaven, food from heaven, and their clothes didn't wear out walking through the desert, he opened the Red Sea to take them away from their enemies. They still complained. But we have to live a life of thanking God. And not complaining and not seeing it in a negative way, even though it may be hard. But God wants you to trust him, to keep your faith, because there's going to be things that are going to hit you in life hard. God never promised this walk would be easy. God never promised that we won't have trials or tribulations. He said, while we're in this earth, we're going to have trials and tribulations and, and troubles. But hold on to the faith and know that God is with you through them all. And he has a purpose and a plan. And he turns everything around for you good. So we just need to know that God is writing our story. And we have to trust him for the ending. God bless you guys.
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Press the bell for any videos that I put up so you can be notified. And don't forget, stay blessed. God bless. I love you, my women of God.